Five, four, three, two, one, and we are live with two phenomenal characters whose stories you've seen in the podcast world. It's not very often you get a live Q and A with a start of banged up um, on Channel Four, or get to speak to someone who's fought with bloody AJ. So huge thank you to Kevin Lane and Matt Legg, and we've got huge news to announce. If you're not already familiar. These guys are doing an event with Kenny Collins, February 23rd, Cambridge, an exclusive location yet to be announced, and tickets are on Eventbrite. So for people not familiar with you guys' story, I'll start with Kevin. Do you just want to tell the viewers a little bit about you? Yeah, uh, I was sent to prison for throwing stones at low-flying (laughs) aeroplanes. No, I went to prison wrongly convicted of a contract killing, which is going to be challenged in the courts this year. Finally, again, at last. Fantastic. And Matt has been massive on YouTube. He's he's <laughs> knocking out videos that get hundreds of thousands of views now. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Yeah, it's going well with YouTube at the moment. Um, never thought I'd have this much success. And my background was I was a criminal from teenage years. Went to prison at the age of 18, met Norman Buckland in there again, and he got me into boxing. So I came out, did the amateur boxing, got to the number two in England, ABA final, and then turned professional and um, put the life of crime behind me and then got to fight AJ at Wembley and got to fight James Tony, who's a, um, uh, an all-time great in the boxing world. So, yeah, it was um, something I would never have dreamed of, could turn my life around like that, really. Well done. And for the viewers, if you've got any questions for these guys, whether you're watching this on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, uh, wherever in the world, please put them in the comments section in the chat and we'll get them to them. So, Kevin, how long have you been out now? So, I've been out. I got released in 2015. um, And then I was recalled for a common assault, a non-custodial offence, and I I spent another uh, 16 and a half months in prison for that. I've been released again. I've been given some compensation as relation in relation to uh, a wrongful recall. Um, doesn't get the time back, of course. But nonetheless, if you hold on to that for too long, it will ruin your personality. So I just concentrate on now and going forward. So I've been now, like I say, 2015, recalled in 2020. I did that amount of time. I've been out about two years now. And Kevin, why have you decided to get together in Cambridge with a few of your mates and tell your stories to the public? Well, I'm a reformed character now, uh, irrespective of me being wrongfully convicted. I used to dabble, I used to duck and dive and work. I love work. But if a lorry load of washing powder come up, I'd buy it and sell it. (laughs) Washing powder is a great seller, by the way. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) so I feel that... People really need to know what's gone on in relation to my conviction, um, what I do now, to give people inspiration in going forward in life and to keep going forward in, at the hardest of times. Because believe me, I've had the hardest of times. So I thought an evening with Kevin Lane and guests just to let the public know that there's always light at the end of the tunnel and to keep going forward. Uh, and I like, I like that type of my life where I can give people inspiration and strength to carry on going when times are so difficult at the moment. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Got a question from Big Shawnee, Kevin. I met Kev years ago in the Reindeer pub. Does he remember Chico Wine Bar? <laughs> yeah, I do because uh, I do because uh, I do remember it. <laughs> but um, a great, great Big Sean is, oh, I think I know who he's talking about actually. And Chico's was, was quite a, a, a vibrant place. I remember I got chased by the police once. I had to climb up a drain pipe, over a roof, <laughs> go onto the front of the roof. And that's because I had a straightener with a fella outside. I said, listen, you took a liberty. Let's have a straightener. I had a straightener with him. The police come and chased me. I would have got nicked for that. But I thought I ain't done nothing wrong. I just had a straightener with a fella who took a liberty. And because uh, he's lying on the floor, they look at, the, look at me and think I'm the perpetrator. No, I just bashed him up. But he was a boxer himself. Anyway, I had to climb over the roof and down the roof. And I got away. But that was it, Chico's. <laughs> you got a question from Mark, Kevin. Was really looking forward to Kenny Noy making an appearance. 
do you think the authorities will ever allow him to do an event? Never. He's hated. Let's have it right. He's killed a police officer who was running around his grounds with a balaclava on. Two of them, if not more. Um, what would you go in your garden with if, if you had a, 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 a luxurious house, you had money, and you got two geezers with balaclavas running around? If I had a gun, I'd go out have a gun. The law is in most countries, you have to, def to defend yourself with whatever someone's attacking you with. So if they're attacking you with a dustbin lid, you can hit them with a dustbin lid. It's a stupid law. But let's face it, nobody goes out in their garden in the pitch black in the middle of nowhere with a toothbrush. So I, I feel it's very un... Kenny is, is really, really targeted. And the gentleman that he killed, let's have that right. When the gentleman got out of his car on the last, on this, on this second murder, the gentleman said to his girlfriend, he's only an old cunt, don't worry about him, and walked towards Kenny as if he was not give him a good hiding. I'm sorry about the swearing there. I apologise for that. But that's what he said. Can Kenny stab you? Yeah. yeah. There's always um, two, two sides or even more to the story. So you got a question here. Saw Mr. Leg spar with Big Paul Venice. Anything coming up with any big names sparring, Matt? Yeah, me. Who was that from, Sean? Yeah, me and, Ke me and Kevin spar as well. <laughs> Lee Marvin, Hitchman. Oh, Lee. How you doing, Lee? Manchester. How you doing, Lee? Yeah, me and Kevin have sparred before. Uh, sparred with Paul Venice, um, Jack Draper, and Danny Christie. But we have got an event coming up. Uh, Manny Clark spoke to me today. We've got an event coming up later on in the year, which Kevin will be there. I think Tony Argent might be there. It's going to be uh, ex-professional boxers having a little move around, a little spa, and some other guests from the criminal world might be there as well. It'd be quite a big event. Fan for later on in the year. So we will be doing more sparring. Yeah, definitely. Cheers, Lee. Question. Matt, you've forgotten to mention we'll be sparring with uh, a world champion. Be what? You know who that is. We'll be sparring who? with Mr. Nelson, the world champion. Oh, jo oh you're, sparring, you're, you're sparring Johnny Nelson? Yeah, I've got two I rounds of Johnny Nelson. Doing as well? I don't know because I think Johnny only wants to spar with two. He heard oh, <laughs> what's coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that man will be jumping around. I won't even be able to hit him. Let's get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I think he only wants to do four rounds and he'll be yeah. with Marcus Lufus, I believe, from Gogglebox. That's all right. I'm happy to watch. You. Fuck me. If you, if you were him, if you were him, you're going to take off to Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> no, just for the Jeff. record, just for the record, Matty, when you hit the punch balls at the fairs, he breaks them. He absolutely <laughs> breaks them. And he was barred from the fairs from hitting them. So bear that in mind, folks. And he's hit yeah. me before and all, so I should know. <laughs> yeah i've been in the same room as matt and he's a very large and powerful individual but an absolute gentleman so a question from greg jackson kev was it hard to readjust after your long stretch that's from greg no what i found really difficult was um bluetooth memorable information sat nav and stuff like that, I had no idea about it, and it took me years and years. And the, the internet, it's like you've been taken out of your country, stuck in a new country, learn the language straight away. You can't do it. Very difficult. So we've got a question for both of you. It's from Sharon Scott. What are your thoughts on YouTuber fighters and misfit boxing? Kev, do you want to go I first? One. I haven't got do one. I don't know much, I haven't done much do about it. Matt, it's better to talk on this. Um, I think they, they've brought in a lot of disrespectful behaviour. People like KSI, um, the Logan Paul, no, Jake Paul. I just find them very disrespectful. And um, don't get me wrong, there's some good fighters. Jake Paul's quite a good fighter now. Um, it's, they get big money. They generate a lot of money, so it's going to keep on going because where there's money, it will carry on. But I just think they're quite disrespectful. KSI was... I just Go on. Sorry, Matt. Sorry, Matt. Sorry, mate. Carry on. That's all right. No, go on, Kev. Can I just say that, you know, I think 40 or maybe 50 years ago, there was 40,000 professional boxers in this country. There's around about 1,500 now, maybe 2,000. There wasn't mm -hmm. that many three years ago. So the unlicensed fighting and such has taken off to such a degree, the professionals of the game, 
you can get people who do a streamlined fight and they would get 80,000 views at five yeah. pound a head. Do the maths. And you'll get a professional boxer who's trained six months or four months for a fight and get a few thousand pounds. Um, and they're professionals, the elite of the sport. That's where I think it becomes a little bit unfair. Why do people want to see the gruesome, twosome stuff instead of the professionals at work? Who are, yeah. they're, they're, they're professionals and, and artists at their sport. So I feel yeah. a little bit differential to that, of course. But other than that, I don't know anything more about it. Viewers, if you've just joined us, I've got Matt Legg and Kevin Lane. We're doing an event February 23rd out of Cambridge. It's going to be an exclusive venue we've not announced yet, but tickets are on Eventbrite. There's a link in the description box below this video if you want to come along. And it's also going to have Kenny Collins there as well, who caused one of the biggest um, fines in the history of organized crime in this country. Um, millions and millions he was ordered to pay back. All right, so comment here from Greg. Can I just, just add to that? Can I just yeah. add to that? Kenny Collins, he has to pay he has fifteen hundred pound a day interest on his fine, a day, and let's have it right. The fine was split between there was seven million pound Kenny's got to pay back or whatever it is. That fine should have been dis distributed between all of the offenders, not each person. So then they've got back more than what was stolen in the first instance anyway, um, wow. and that's obviously wrong. And he's never going to be able to pay that 1500 the interest back alone if you worked out over a year. That's insane. So, do they, so if he makes money or anything, do they just confiscate that? I pay for everything for him, pretty much. He goes to work in a yard in the day in the freezing cold, 83 years of age to get a living. What? Okay, And he doesn't even get a living. He sits out in the cold cleaning cars and stuff like that. I give him money when I get money. And uh, when I do get a few quid, I'm giving him my credit card. Go on, fuck off around the world. <laughs> We've got a comment from Greg. It says, um, give a big love to my bro, Matty and Kev. I'm here with my old mom. She sends love. She wants to see you, Matt and Kev, one day. She'd love to meet you too, my B. That, that's our mate, Greg. That's Greg, Kev, who came over the other week. Yeah, bless his mum. I've sent a few yeah. messages to him and Greg. Lovely. Oh, lovely. Nice fella. How you doing, Greg? Give my love to Kathy and your mum and, and to Jim, and I'll see you all soon. Sean wants to ask Kev, where's his hooch? So the hooch <laughs> is going in production. I'm now represented by a company called E-Commerce Group Limited. They're worldwide. They look after free international governments, media and such. And they will be putting my hooch into production and launching it, and you'll be getting it on Amazon Prime and so on and so forth, a bit like KSI. So it ain't going to be too long before that's on the line. But I'll be very, I must give you a warning here now. When you get pissed on that, don't be saying <laughs> you've been lured into a full sense of security by some damsel in distress, because my youth <laughs> won't cover you for that. <laughs> it, strong stuff. Or it vice is. versa, <laughs> shall I say. <laughs> question, from, question from Joe. Who's the hardest boxer you've ever boxed, Matt? Thank you, Joe. The hardest box over box was definitely, without a doubt, James Tony. James Tony's had over 90 professional fights, never been knocked out. A lot of fights at world level. He's, he's won the title at middleweight, uh, light heavyweight, cruiserweight, heavyweight. He knocked out Evander Holyfield. He can never be knocked out. I've spoke to professionals and they said, you will never, nobody will ever knock him out. He was the, technically the most gifted as well. Um, the hardest puncher was Anthony Joshua, without a doubt. He broke my eye socket. And um, the, the most the most awkward was Tyson Fury that I sparred with. I could barely, like, you can barely set yourself to throw a punch at him. He moves that well. Back in the old days, this was. But, yeah, them, them three were the best in different ways. Question from Sean from Matt. Would you fight YouTubers? <laughs> it sounds a bit hypocritical, but if the money was right, I'd do it, yeah. <laughs> They're making millions, aren't they, Jake? They're Paul? making millions. I, I probably, I probably would, yeah. If there's money in it, I mean, uh, what was his name? Um, uh, Tommy Fury's done it, and um, yeah, I probably would. Right. All right. Over to Kevin. Then, have you got any prison stories you can tease the viewers with? <clears throat> well. <clears throat> I remember talking about Tony Arjun a minute, and it's just off the cuff, okay? 
And there was a big screw called Richie. And he was a right nice screw. I don't care what anyone says. He never nicked anybody. He used to compete in bodybuilding. But he was the softest spoken giant you could sort of imagine, okay? Real mm -hmm. nice fellow, Richie, by the way, if you're watching this. Proper gentleman. And he was going out to the surgery, right? And Tony's at the bars on the wing. And he was going out to the back of the surgery where Tony worked as a laundry man. And he goes to me, Kevin, he goes, what's that screw's name? I went, Wally. He's going, Oi, Wally! Oi, Wally! <laughs> <laughs> and he goes to me, Tony, that screw's ignoring me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little story. I was trying to have a laugh, right? And that Richie's looked at him and think, He's calling me a Wally. <laughs> no wonder he didn't answer him. <laughs> so, look, oh, oh, there's lots of stories for prison, and you'll hear them on the 23rd of February next month at the Cambridge Country Club in Bourne. I've named it. There we go. It's palatial, so you come into a beautiful place. Um, have a look at it online, and you'll see what I'm saying. Um, but some other stories I've got. Let me just tell you about the prison service. Um, I brought the prison service to the negotiating table and um, they released me. They never wanted to release me. On my father said, Lane will be released when he's very old or dead. There we go. So my conviction is going to be challenged, like I say, this year and hopefully squashed, which I believe it will be, based on a number of factors that can't be argued. Um, and then I'll have a lot to say. My book, Fitted Up and Fighting Back, which is available on Amazon. I've got no books left to give away or sell, so you have to get it from Amazon. There's been no black order on that. Read the book, and that tells you quite a bit. But in terms of prison, I'm writing a new book with e-commerce, uh, uh, e and I'll be doing that in March, and uh, that'll be for release. And that'll be quite a lot about the prison service, my release upon prison, the troubles I've had, uh, and the people I've had to have run-ins with, and the people that have absolutely abused their position against me when I'm a convicted contract killer. So I'm on life license and they just abuse that and lie. But in terms of um, prison, I've got a lot to say about that and it'll be coming out in the future. Um, I might even talk about a few screws I've kissed. But I haven't actually, I only, only kissed one screw like that. I don't want to go into that sort of detail because I've never done that. Either. I did push one screw. And I had to lean in a cupboard down the church. She was serving out the tea. There was no cameras in this little cupboard. It was like a coat room. I leaned in, give her a little kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and then back out, right? And there was this bloke reading the paper. A mate of mine, right? Wayne Doyle, who is dead now, God rest his soul. I don't believe in God, but God rest him, okay? Whoever's listening. And he's reading the paper and he went, Bloke reading the paper! <laughs> <laughs> That's the first. I haven't told many people that story. <laughs> Kevin, I've got two questions about what you just said, the early bit. When you get a notification saying you're not going to get released either until you're very old or dead, firstly, how old were you when you got that? And what went through your head? So how old when I got released or how old when I went to prison? No, when you got notified that you weren't going to get released till you were very old or dead. Uh, it was about 2010. Uh, no, in 2016, I got told by a screw who said, I don't know what you've done to get released, he said, but on your file, it's a security governor. He said, on your file, he said, it's, you are not to be released to you. are very old and dead. I went, yeah, I'm going home now. See you later. I think I told him where to go. But then in 2010, I got a letter from the Home Office and said, I will remain in prison indefinitely unless I admit my guilt and do the offending behaving courses. I went back to my letter and wrote my letter. <laughs> respectfully, as if to say, listen, I ain't suffering what you say about your letters. Clear off. And I will keep... So John Scott was my trainer at Bushy ABC. He had Bob Williams, a fighting fireman, Carlos Chase and a few other yeah. people, Matthew Tate, um, yeah. Dave Walker, and et cetera, et cetera. And he said, keep throwing them punches, Kev. And he said, hopefully one will land eventually. And I used to work off that method. I send 100 letters out, one will land. And that's how I worked. I thought, I'm not having your bollocks. I'm going to keep fighting. And that's what I did, kept fighting. And it's the only form of releasing stress. Wow. As well as training and getting drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huge, which will be on sale soon. Got a question from Mr. Tommy Guns. Great guests. These two are good people. Question for Matt. 
Did James Tony try any particular old school sneaky tricks on you? Um, the fit, no, not in the actual ring, but what he was, what he did beforehand, he was a bit of a diva towards Sky Sports and towards the other boxers. He kept himself away from us all because it was America versus Britain in prize fire, and we all stayed in the hotel together. We actually had dinner with the Americans the night before we fought them all. But James Tony kept himself away. So we thought he was a bit of a diva and he stormed off a couple of times, but he was just doing it for show because after the fight, he was actually the loveliest bloke in the world. He came up to Milton Keynes actually two days later, signed the gloves for me and he goes, Matt Leg, and give me a big cuddle. But he did a few little mind games before the fight. But during the actual fight, no. Nah. And I underestimated his power because he went light in the first couple of rounds. He sort of did a couple of little tip tap shots. And in the last round, he caught me right on the chin with a big right. And it rocked me for a second, but the rest stopped. I thought the rest stopped it prematurely. Um, I only had a, probably about half a round to go. Um, but no, he was a nice, very, very nice fella. It was an honour, an honour to get in the ring with him. you got another one here from Asking for Truth. Who is the hardest fighter you have ever fought, Bare Knuckle? Uh, me? Yeah. Bare Knuckle? No one in a one-on-one, -on because -one, not many people did a one-on-one -on -one with me. It was normally like a gang of them. But the hardest fight I had was a, a five doorman in um, Iron Appa. And they um, I, they were giving it, so they pushed me out. Um, and I said to them, come outside and fight me, all five. And they didn't come out. They jumped out of a side door. CS gassed me with this gel. And then they, they hit me with coshes all over the legs, on the head. And... Um, that was the hardest fight because I had to fight back with gas in my face and caught getting coshed. And when the gas cleared, I managed to start getting a little foothold and they gassed me again straight in the face. That was one of the toughest. That was the last day of my holiday as well. I was flying home about four hours later. So I had to fly home like all busted up. And But yeah, not really any one-on-ones because it was normally like, it would normally be more than one person attacking me. And viewers, check out our podcast with Matt for more stories of his fights. Kevin, what was the hardest fight you've ever had? Well, do you know what? You couldn't make that up, so can you see that? Yep. Yeah, unbelievable. I've just pulled it up and you've asked me that question. That's oh, out yeah. now. It came out tonight. Now, that wasn't the hardest fight I've ever had, but it's one of them. And Matt was talking about the gas there. I went to the Paradise Club in Islington. I had a rave myself with Judge Jules, Danny Ramblin, and Roy the Roach, et cetera, et cetera. In the yard I had, I had an aircraft hangar. It was called Large Nissan. I actually get a juggernaut in there. And I had another connecting building. So I had a rave there, uh, packed. I went to the Paradise Club after, and my friend Sid McFarland and Lee and uh, uh, Keith, Cork Keith Corky and a few other people worked the door there with another security firm. So I've gone straight in. They've let me in, but the other firm didn't you know me. I'm sitting down in a cafe bar with Paul Cox and we're having coffee and that after the rave. Weren't counting the money, the money was elsewhere. And um, some door would come up to me and he said, give us your drugs. And I said, listen, mate, I've got no drugs. I've just come from my own rave. You've got the wrong, but, and he's gone, he started arguing with me. So I stood up, uh, I've gone, right, let's carry this on outside, respect for the doorman. And he threw a punch at me, it's gone off. Um, <clears throat> the old doorman had come in, cut long story short, he got split up. Um, my mate Sid come in and he's gone, Kevin, what's going on? I said, you see this lot here, they took a liberty of me. Pulled the CS gas out. I said, you better go, Sid, it's going off now. And I sprayed it running into them. They all piled in, it went off again. And they got me outside, right? And uh, I was coughing and splowing, but so were they. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, said, right. I said, I'll have you. Geezer come out, doorman, I weighed him in. They jumped me. Another geezer come out of a baseball bat. I've done him, they jumped me. So I had three of them. Three times I've done the doorman, three times they they fucking jumped in and give me a good idea. So then I'm sitting on, Sid's come out, then Sid McFarlane, he's come out, and I'm sitting on the floor, and I'm coughing and spluttering, so I'm gassing. And he goes, right, you lot, he says, there is pals, of course, work colleagues, but it ain't going on no more. He said, if any more of you want him, you've got to come through me. Fair play to him. And I looked up to him, and I said, you see, you lot, you've made a terrible mistake, said, because I'm coming back. And they, the doorman turned around and said, we knew when he said that, he meant it. <laughs> but that was one of the hardest fights I've had because, you know, I got weighed in three times. I won, but I got weighed in. Um, but the hardest single fight I've ever had. 
It has to be Peter Fury with the gloves on. That man stopped me, I don't know how many times, hit to the kid just down on my knee. I had to say, I, had to say, Pete, I, couldn't, get, I couldn't carry on. I know that has never, ever happened to me in my life until I met Peter Fury. Big fucking bastard of a man. He's got, <laughs> <laughs> he's got arms like an orangutan. He can reach up. <laughs> so Peter Fury is the hardest man I've ever fought who's put me on my knees. And he will be joining us. An absolute true gentleman. Make no mistake about that. An absolute gentleman who says it as it is and, and uh, read the Bible every day. And I love and respect him and his family to the absolute best. So he, please and, come. And, and for the viewers, Peter Fury's joining us, right, on in Cambridge? Peter Fury's coming on the evening of the 23rd of Feb. He's really looking forward to it. So am I, as is Kenny Collins, because Kenny Collins... People would like to hear about that old man. I mean, he will tell you for a fact, for instance, stories like he used to get his suits made with the Quatrins, got their suits. He goes, I used to try one, of course. He said, but they didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get stories about him where he's crawling into buildings that have got no roofs on because they've been bombed. He said, that's how I've become, I've become a thief. Starving, I want in there. But look, yeah, it's going to be a great night, great characters there. Uh, crime don't pay, of course. It does for the one or two people, but very, very few. Most of the people go to prison, and it's a very bad life. But it's nice to hear people talk now as a reformed character of what we do now. And for Kenny, who, who hasn't got such a, 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 an, a, an exclusive life that he once did have. Uh, he's 84, like I say. So people need to come and listen, and it might be an education to people. Question from Edward. Kevin, did you get on with my old mate, Johnny Clark from Bushy? Love John to bits. I absolutely love John. One of the old school criminals, or not criminals. John was a face. He never hurt no one. You go around his house. He had two garages. open up. If you had kids, you go, come here, I've got an ice cream for you, and I've got this for you, and I've got that for you, and take this and take that. John used to lend money, but he'd say, look, tell you what, give me my money back. I'm going to call it quits. Don't worry about the interest. He was a decent, fair man. Oh, I love John to bits. And when I went away, I'd give John a few quid and he put it out for me to bring in a few quid. And, I, you know, he didn't have to do that. But I love Johnny Clark to bits. I'll put this and one to wife. Matt. It's from Sharon. Loved yet heartbreaking Ricky Hatton life story. Great awareness of mental health within the boxing industry, the highs and lows. Do we need more awareness around you tough guys? Well, yeah, I mean... People like Frank Bruno suffers from mental health, um, but heavyweight champion of the world. Mike Tyson, um, it's a very Tyson Fury as well. I mean, you've got a lot of people that are ambassadors now for mental health. Tyson Fury did it especially a couple of years back. Um, yeah, like Ricky Hatton as well. So I think it is, people are more open about it now and they're more confident to speak about it because of people being so open like Tyson Fury and Bruno. So I think it is changing now. Back in the old days, it was uh, all hush hush, and people felt like they were being weak if they spoke about it. But it's all changed now, so for the better, yeah. Can I just say as well um, that that picture that Kevin held up earlier was my mate Ben's uh, YouTube channel, Ben the Inquirer 2.0. He's done a video today about Kevin, so if you tune into that, it's called the Inquirer 2.0. Cheers, Ben. And also, thanks for the question, yeah. Sharon. Thanks, Ben. Thank you very much. Sorry, Matt. I'd just like to say about the, the, the men mental health. Uh, one for the lads and scared to jump. I'm an ambassador. Well, I've done podcasts for them and one for the lads using me as an ambassador. Absolutely got 5,000 members, SES members on there, of course, but I mean, they are characters of their own. Uh, men's mental health. Don't be afraid to talk. Mm -hmm. It's all a myth. Listen, take that rucksack off your back that you're carrying around, put it on a bleeding shelf and talk to someone. No problem about that at all. Message me and I'll message you back. Or get on the phone with someone. All right? Don't be phoning up Ann Summers. Question from... <laughs> <laughs> question, question from Mark. If Kevin gets his conviction quashed, does that mean the same thing would automatically happen to his life sentence? Absolutely. And um, like I say, I've just released my solicitor today because he's just too busy. He's got other problems than that. Um, I've, uh, I can't carry on no more I'm waiting and waiting. I believe the police are anxiously trying to put me back in prison as well as a number of other people. They want me back in prison rather than admit to a miscarriage of justice. 
So I'm, I'm moving over to Frank Carson, uh, and he will be representing me now with my original barrister, of course. And we will be. Um, sorry, what was the question again? I missed that. Do you think is uh, is uh, well? Does it all get squashed? It does get squashed, but in the meantime, I'm on life license, and it's very difficult. Very difficult. So if people attack me, some blokes tried to mug me for my watch about nine months ago. And one of them hit me from the side, broke my eye socket, broke my nose and that. Um, they didn't get my watch, of course, and I stopped the bleeding and the geezer run. I said, right, let's have a chat around me and you. And he run. But that's called bad behaviour. I'd get recalled for that. Terrible. Where were you in that? In the middle of London. Cameras everywhere. And it showed the true facts of what happened. So I probably won't get recalled because of where it was. But if it was happened somewhere else and it was reported, I'd get recalled. And it could see that these three geese had tried to me from a watch and that thought I was like a city gent. Took the cashmere jacket off and said, let's talk about it. <laughs> Cheeky bastards. After they hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Does Fury beat Uzik? Tricky one, that is. It's hard to say. Not the fury that fought and Garner, no. He needs to be back to the old fury. So uh, Peter Fury uh, uh, and uh, Tyson Fury. Peter, Peter Fury was schooled by Brendan Ingle. Well, we know he's been in his camp, don't we? If you look at Pete, uh, Tyson Fury, he can move to the left, he can move to the right, he can box orthodox, he can box southpaw. He's a, he's a classy skilled boxer. When he boxes, and that last fight I see him fighting with a geezer who's a bit of a brawler who can punch hard, what did he need to get involved with that for? He got behind his jab, smashed him and picked him off. Danced about. He can dance. He can move. He fights like that. No problem whatsoever. He gets involved and it's anybody's game, isn't it? If Tyson goes back to his boxing, which he can box, let's have it right. No problem whatsoever. In so, my opinion. Question, shout out to Ella. Question for Matt. How did you get out of the criminal world and into boxing? What triggered you to stop Hi, Ella. Thank you for the question. Um, what happened was um, I was actually a career criminal, really. I was a criminal up until I even carried on when I was boxing. But when my son got to the age of five, he's now 22, Matt Jr., I realised if he, I would be a bad influence on him. So what I did, I just decided then to cut it all, stop it all, pack it all in and, and never did it again since then. Mainly my, my kids to not be a bad influence on them. But the, the boxing did help because when I got out of prison, I did box amateur. And whenever I was training for a fight, I'd keep out of trouble, keep out of the pubs. I wouldn't get involved in the same sort of crime. But I did do it for a few more years up until on and off. It was on and off. Say I, I had a, say I had time off boxing, I would go back to crime. But when I was boxing, I would leave the crime behind. So it definitely does keep you on the right path. And I packed it all in about my early 30s late 20s I just stopped it all I wouldn't even do debt collecting then debt collecting was like the last little thing I would do and when I say debt collecting a lot of people say oh debt collectors are bullies we're not what what I would do is if someone got their money stolen or they got robbed I would go and help the person out who's been robbed we weren't going around like bailiffs collecting people who haven't paid their council tax we were collecting money that's been stolen a lot of them were criminal debts and stuff um so we, I, I, I even phased that out towards the end. Gary wants to know why you fought James Tony. Why I fought him? Yeah. Um, it was in the prize fighter, uh, USA versus UK, Eddie Hearn's prize fighter. Anthony Joshua was in his, having his third professional fight, and it was four USA versus four UK. And they drew the names out of a hat, or so they said. And luckily, I got picked to fight against James Tony in the first round, which was the dream come true for me to get, I knew then that I was going to fight a legend. So I was over the moon, but it was out Matt, of a hat. They picked it out of a hat. Matt, do you get hassled by the general population or are punters generally cool? Only asking, as I imagine being a boxer encourages a certain type of idiot to try and square up. Yeah. I've had it, I've had it a couple of times. I did it about three or four years ago. Two lads in the casino um, started and I had a fight with them and they hit me with a duster, broke my jaw, but I carried on fighting, chased them around the casino. Um, then I had another fight. Someone started on me because I was a boxer uh, and I had a straightener with him. 
and he apologised the next day. He said he felt like he was in a washing machine. <laughs> but he had the decency to apologise. Um, but he started for no reason because he was drunk and he knew I was a boxer. And um, I tried to avoid it. I, I, I kept him at arm's distance for quite a while. He kept on, on, on. And in the end, I just said, look, are you looking for a fight? And he said, yeah, I am. So I went, all right, come on him. And we walked outside and he just, we had a little scuffle and I hit him with a big punch. And he um, yeah, didn't want to know. But I shook his hand after. I shook his hand. I said, why did you bother doing that? He just said, oh, I'm just drunk. But he apologised the next day. And Matt and Kevin will be going into far more detail on February 23rd at the event in Cambridge. Tickets on Eventbrite, link in description box. Terry is wondering how hard AJ is. Very hard hitter. Uh, even when you block, even when you block and, and he hits the gloves, even that hurts. So it's like you've got nowhere to go. You've just got to move your head with him. And when he hits you clean on, yeah, the most powerful puncher I've faced. He's world-level, world-level puncher. My old same. woman used to punch harder than him. <laughs> <laughs> but she had a brick in her handbag. <laughs> Julian wants to know, Kevin, do you know Ruben and Tina Hackney? Why? Well, let's not answer if it's a trick question. Well, have they got children that look like me? <laughs> <laughs> you can't no trick more. a trickster. Joe, is, uh, Matt's what's the oldest? What's the oldest you would box at? What, me? Yeah. Um, I, I feel, I feel um, ready to go now. I feel like I've learned so much lately and I feel like I'm in boxing ability, my best I've ever been, but... It's just the body doesn't really hold up at the moment. So, I mean, I'm late. I'm nearly 48. So, I still probably box. What are they trying to put Kevin back in prison for? Uh, so, my original co defendant is a super class and he's put a lot of people in prison and that's pretty much known now. And he alleged that I committed a number of murders and they're still looking at me for those murders. Of course, um, there's a lot of information in relation to. I know in particular that uh, I can't mention on here that I know who, it wasn't me. I know that much. But why don't they go and ask my co-defendant who committed those murders? Because he mentioned them first before I even knew about them. So that's what they're trying to put me back in for murders. Because when I got uh, found guilty of murder, there was three police forces waiting to dock ID me, dock, dock arrest me for three other murders. Um, which is, you know... It, the, the criminal justice system will never want to admit to a, a murderer and apologise to you. So if they get you found guilty of another murder, then they're pretty damaged for me. And of course, my conviction is going to be squashed this year. So they're on dodgy ground, which is why I was recalled for the non-custodial offence for the common assault. They would investigating me for another murder then. They was interviewing people about me. The maddest part about it is they was interviewing people who knew who committed that bloody murder uh, or, or, or had ideas about it. But... There we go. So it's for murders. Matt, do you train for war or for the beach? I train for war when I'm training. If I'm training, yeah, for war. Um, since the age of yeah, 14, 15, I've always trained. Not to compete with anyone else, but to get myself as fit and strong as I can. Is that Lee? Is that Lee Marvin, was it? How you doing, Lee? Yeah, yeah. So this, this might have to be the last question. We've got it for both of you. What are your training routines like at the moment? Matt? Uh, at the moment, because I'm 20 stone, I'm not doing a lot of running. I'm, I'm doing walks up and down hills. I go up and down the hills. I do three or four miles every morning. I do weight training with my boy, Matty Jr., four times a week. I hit the bag a couple of times a week. And um, I was doing stair runs. I do a couple of stair runs, but I've got to get the weight off. When I'm down to about 19 and a half, I'll start doing stair running again. For me, myself, my training routines have um, changed because um, I've got an injury on my knee. If I if I jump to someone, it would go over and I'd go over. I've gone over four times for different reasons, jumping over a little stream. So I have to change my routine. I can't roll, I can't run. Even boxing, I, I lunge. When we, when me and Matty were sparring, I was lunging like a drunk instead of walking in and moving. Um, so my training routines pretty really much start on the spot. I would go five press ups, uh, two chin ups, uh, two leg raises. I'll do that for an hour in one spot, which takes a bit of, bit of cardiovascular, a little bit of strength and conditioning. 
But uh, so my trainers ain't what they used to be. As soon as I've had this operation, I'll be firing again. And Kevin, why should people come to see you on the 23rd of Feb in Cambridge? Because we'll have a bloody good laugh. Um, I've got a lot to tell people. We'll have a great evening. There'll be a lot of people there other than myself. There'll be some celebrities there that aren't mentioned yet. There'll be a lot of the Banged Up crew uh, who has appeared on Banged Up. And other people, and I'm not going to mention them. So collectively, it'll be a right nice evening. And then there'll be some music on. And um, I like to meet people and people get to know me and say, actually, what a lovely man he is. Wherever I go, I meet people and say, oh, my God, what a lovely man. And I'm proud of that. Kevin, could you remind people how many people are going to be on the stage as your guests? So you've got Peter Fury, Matt, Matt Legg and Kenny Collins. So there's four there, plus myself, plus the other uh, celebrities that are going to be in the audience or sitting on the side of such that you can mingle with and meet and greet. So it's going to be a great evening. I mean, you're getting other celebrities for nothing. They're just thrown in as an abundance because they're my friends and such. And um, Ashleen from... Uh, GBN News and another of under she originally started Big Brother, but she's, she's done a lot more than that, and a few other celebrities. So, um, yeah, please get your backsides down there and, and make a great evening of it. And Matt, why should the viewers come and see you on the 23rd of Feb? Uh, same reason, it's going to be a great night. I'm actually looking forward to hearing all the stories. You've got Peter, in terms of boxing, you've got Peter Fury talking about his life, you've got Kevin's done his boxing. I've got all the stories from what I've done and the people I've fought and sparred. Um, yeah, and you've got it's just going to be a great night. You're going to get your photographs taken with everyone. Um, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Get your dancing shoes on and your fast slippers. <laughs> 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 and get ready for some hooch in the house. Well, so... I'm not going. I'm not going to be taking any hooch there, like I did my last one. But um, it takes. I could. Well, could I get some down actually? Do you know what? I'm going to get some booze down. I'm going to get some bottles down and we'll mm. give them away for whatever reasons. I'll get some down. Yeah, leave it to me. You'll get some from my hooch down. But my hooch is being currently broached in Germany. So a number, a leading uh, brewery, you would all know household name, has been approached as well as another one. So we're looking about going into manufacture of that. We will be. And that will be available on Amazon as well. It's uh, a strong yeah. box, like I said, isn't it? So a huge thank you to Kevin and Matt yes. for joining us, for joining us. And all the details for the event are in the description box below this video if you're watching it on YouTube. The Eventbrite link is there. If you're listening on the audio platforms, just go on Google, put in Kevin Lane and guests, and it will come right up at the top if you want to grab a ticket for that. So stay tuned. We've got a Royal Mess coming up at 8.30. We've got a Psychic coming up at 10-something. So two more huge shows coming up tonight. Thanks again, guys. See you Thank soon. You Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.